proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another in a series of broadcasts presented by your War Department titled, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present as our star, Mr. Mark Stevens, in the play, Felling Station Falstaff, an original story by Richard Hall, with music by Eddie Skrivanek. <laughs> Maybe it was the way her hair curled back in the breeze, or the way she sat behind the wheel of the car, so poised and graceful. At any rate, Bill Humphreys, the filling station attendant, got butterflies in his stomach as the attractive young lady maneuvered the convertible into his station and up to a pump. Service! Hey, how about a little service here? Be right with you. Hello? I am fine, but make it quick, will you? I've got a customer waiting for me in the driveway. A lovely dream in nylons. Well, she can wait a minute, can't she? Yeah, she can, but I can't. Ah, Bill, I'm surprised at you. A man who's supposed to be all settled down? Listen, I am settled down. But what will the little lady say? <laughs> if she were to know? My wife happens to understand me. And when you cut the small talk... Okay, okay. Imagine I just wanted a few kids wanted to come over tonight for a little bridge. Oh, well, thanks, Louie, but we can't. Tonight's our anniversary. Your anniversary? Oh, <laughs> and you talk of a dream in Nylon. Yeah, and she's still waiting. I've got to get out there. Goodbye. Well, it's about time. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting, madam. Call for my broker. Now, what can I do for you? Humphrey Station set the scene for better oil and gasoline. Shall I fill it up? Only five, Longfellow, and please spare the consonants. I'm in a hurry. Right you are. Five you ask for, and you can bet five better gallons you'll never get. Oh, that's really a new one. What's a new what? The poetry, I mean. Oh, you, you like it? Well, anyway, it rhymes. Of course it rhymes. What's more, it catches on with the customers. It does? Sure, and do they love it. Why, sometimes we get into fascinating discussions of the poets. Shelley, Keats, Byron. And you. Well, there's a difference. My stuff hasn't been published yet. However, it's amazing. Since we started using this idea, our volume of business has shown a remarkable increase. There you are. Five gallons. Well, here's your chance to increase it a little more. Will you check my oil, please? Wait just a minute. Wait a minute? What are you talking about? I told you I'm in a hurry. Just a minute. Ah, oh, don't move, please. Sit right where you are. I told you I'm in a hurry. Please. Ah, oh, that's it. Right like that. Let me look at you. Oh. Well? Yep. Yeah, they match. The blue of your eyes and the blue of the skies. They do? Wonderfully. Oh, will you excuse me just a minute? Don't go away. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Are you the manager? Yes, sir. Well, I'm Clarence Whipple. I've been trading here off and on for a long time. Buy all my oil here, buy all my gasoline. Even fill my cigarette lighter here. Yes, Mr. Whipple. Now, young man, you have a sign over there which says, at no time is there any question that we welcome each suggestion. Absolutely, Mr. Whipple. Why, I just repainted that sign yesterday. You like it in Cerise letters. Yes, I mean, uh, uh, what are you saying, young man? I only like the thought behind it. And that's why I'm here. I want to register a complaint. Oh, well, go right ahead, Mr. Whipple. Well, the other afternoon, I dropped into your station to fill up my tank. And your cigarette lighter? No, I filled that the day before. Well, anyway, I pride myself on being neat. Yes? And while waiting for the gasoline, I, I noticed an ink smudge on my right index finger. Oh, that's too bad. Yes, I'd been writing checks that day. My hand trembled so when I replaced the cap on the ink bottle, a little of it spilled. Well, at any rate, sir, I walked into your restroom to remove it... And then it happened. There wasn't any soap. Plenty of soap. Towels? Plenty of towels. Oh, what was it then? The hot water was only lukewarm. Mr. Whipple. Oh, you've cut me to the quick. Oh, oh, I have. That should never happen, never. Oh, well, well, don't take it too hard now. I... Mr. Whipple, all I can say is that it'll never happen again. Come in any time. Bring your ink smudge, but give us another chance. Well, thank you, young man. And believe me, it's that type of willingness to take criticism which has built America. Good day. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Whipple. I'm sorry to have kept you waiting. Oh, that's all right. I'm getting into the habit. Now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes. 
Would I be presumptuous if I told you that when you drove in here this afternoon, my heart did flip-flops, like when you ride the roller coaster? Really? Really. You most certainly would be presumptuous. Well, I've told you, and I'm glad. All right, Mr. Fresh, now that that's over, wasn't there something about checking my oil? Oh, yes, yes. Check your oil, yes, indeed. Humphreys fills your every need. Say, whose idea was it? I mean, the sales talk jingled every customer. Oh, some genius, but uh, I hate notoriety. Mm, difficult, <laughs> isn't it? People wanting your autograph. Yes, yes, particularly on the first of the month, on checks. And aren't you afraid some other filling station will steal your idea? Definitely not, my dear young lady. And why not? Because no other filling station attendant has had the background to duplicate such lyrics as I espouse. Background? So that's the answer. Mm-hmm. Romantic background. You see, you work on the romantic angle for years until you get plenty good. Then you go commercial. But mind you, no success without background. I see. I suppose there was a girl. Oh, yeah. And what a girl. We met at school. You know, somehow, the way you smile or, or get mad or talk or, or something, you remind me of her. I do. Uh huh? Ah, oh, never forget the time we met at a dance. Costume affair. <laughs> I was dressed as Marco Polo. Even had the pony. Anyway, she looked up at me and sort of smiled. Right then and there, I, I knew I was going to spend the rest of my life trying to buy her expensive things. You... You see her often? Every day. Will you please hurry up? Oh, oh, of course. Does it take you all day to check that oil? Why, no. I told you I have a very important engagement. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> what are you laughing about? <laughs> I didn't know you cared. Pause briefly from our story, Filling Station Falstaff, starring Mark Stevens as Bill Humphreys, to bring you an important message from our War Department. Many young men are wondering if they are eligible for education at government expense if they join the Army now. The answer is yes. Any man who enlists in the new regular Army now and serves 90 days, one day of which occurs before the official termination of World War II, is entitled to one year free schooling. This may be at any college, trade, or business school for which he can qualify. But that's not all. If he serves more than 90 days previous to the termination, he may have, in addition to the year's schooling, a month of education for every one served, including the first three months. For example, a soldier who serves six months before the termination of the war may receive 18 months' education at government expense. This is equivalent to two years of school. This applies to original enlistments and re-enlistments alike. A veteran who is not as yet eligible for a full four-year course may still qualify for a complete college education. Go to your nearest Army recruiting station and talk it over. Act Two of Filling Station Fall Staff starring Mark Stevens as Bill Humphreys. Bill has managed to stall the young lady in the convertible. It hasn't been too difficult, and it has been fun. But then there's limit to even a limit. Well, the oil's full up. Great. Well, I, uh, I guess that about gets everything. Does it? I'm afraid so. Did you uh, check the hinge on the glove compartment to make sure there isn't a squeak in it? No, I didn't, but uh, that's thought. Oh, I... you don't. Here's the money. Uh, just a moment. Humphrey stations have the man who shines your windshield spick and span. Oh, excuse me for saying it, but that last one wasn't quite up to par. Well, after all, not every book's a bestseller. Besides, that, that last one was strictly ad lib. Will you please hurry up? I told you I have a very important engagement. With your hairdresser? No. Take your little brother out to see the bears at the zoo? Still wrong. I told you this was a very important engagement. Oh, I get it. A man... That's right. How dull. Oh, I don't think so. I don't want to hear any more about the entire matter. Close the book. Read no further. Well, you're not being fair. All right. Tell me the worst about him. I suppose you met him in school, too. Mm-hmm. You know, it may seem strange to you. Mind you, I'm not saying this because of what you told me. Somehow or other, he... He reminds me of you. He does? Uh-huh. 
Tall, dark, and uh, handsome? Oh, no, not that. He's just big and sweet and kind of dumb. Oh. You, uh, you've known him a long time, I suppose. Oh, yes, long time. Well, I, uh, I guess that about gets everything, including the answer to the $64 question. Let's see, that's uh, five gallons, dollar five. Here you are. Thank you. I just got one more thing to say, and uh, with this closing remark, I'll silently steal back to the inner tube department of the lubrication rack. But all I've got to say is any girl who ties herself down to one man at such an early stage in I life... I rather that... like being in love with one man. In fact, I'm crazy about it. Well, now that you mention it, I, I think you're doing a very wise thing. And furthermore, I don't think there's anyone who could make me change my mind. Well, I know nothing could make me change mine. He's marvelous. She's wonderful. He's terrific. Well, if he's so terrific and you have a date with him, maybe you better be getting on your way. That's the general idea I've been trying to get across ever since I came in here. And when you get home, be sure to put on your best party dress. Absolutely my best party dress. And don't forget, lots of expensive perfume. I know you'll go for that. I'll put on gallons. And don't pin on the orchid he'll send you until just before he gets there. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, Bill, darling, you fool. Don't be late. I won't, sweetheart. We've got to make this a night we'll never forget. After all, it's our second wedding anniversary. This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our proudly we hailed story starring Mark Stevens. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. Remember the flu epidemic which followed World War I? Twenty millions fell victim to the dread flu virus in those tragic days. Many people predicted a similar epidemic after World War II. What happened? Why was there no flu epidemic this time? Well, the mystery of the missing epidemic is really no mystery at all. For Army doctors inoculated seven and a half million soldiers in every part of the world with flu serum, which reduced hospitalization due to respiratory diseases to just about one-tenth of the normal rate. Result? No epidemic, not even a little one, thanks to a practical application of regular Army medical research. Yes, in war and in peace, your regular Army serves the nation and mankind. Out of Army laboratories have come a parade of inventions and discoveries which reach into our daily lives to make us the healthiest nation on earth. The soldiers of your regular army are able young Americans who believe in the value of army training and experience, who found a good job and a useful career and a fine profession. There are many more openings for wide awake young men who seek the opportunity for personal achievement. To them, the army offers an excellent chance for education, travel, and technical training. A man with no prior military service can start at $75 a month, over and above all major living expenses. And don't forget, you can still qualify for benefits under the GI Bill of Rights. If you enlist now and serve 90 days, any one of which occurs before the official termination of the war, you will be eligible for at least one year of education and training at government expense. Get complete information on educational and other benefits of regular Army service at your nearest Army recruiting station. Join the new regular army. Thank you, Mark Stevens, for appearing on this program. Proudly We Hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in. <laughs>